Hi, welcome back. In this uh, short uh, mini lecture, we're going to talk about something that's kind of fun, um, and that is uh, creating scientific posters. Okay, well, a scientific poster is a large document that can communicate your research at a scientific meeting. It should be composed of a short title, an introduction to your burning question, an overview of your trendy experimental approach, and of course your amazing results. Uh, it should show some insightful discussion of the aforementioned results, and a listing of previously published articles that are important to your research, and some brief acknowledgement of the tremendous assistance and financial support from others. If all text is kept to a minimum, a person could fully read your poster in under 10 minutes. All right, well, why should we even do a scientific poster? Well, presenting a poster allows you to more personally interact with the people who are interested in your research. It can reach people who might uh, not be in your specific field of research. And posters are more efficient than a talk because they can be, be viewed even while you're off taking a nap and especially desirable if you're terrible at giving talks. When doing a scientific poster, it ought to have a traditional introduction, uh, bolded lists of information, and the exhibits should be mounted on separate panels of foam core board. You should use 18 point font or larger, and you should use serif rather than sans serif type. And of course, double spacing at least makes it easier to read. Now, when we talk about guidelines for a poster pre presentation, you should remember it's not a journal article. You should present as much information as you can in graphics and tables rather than in sentences. Uh, you should have headlines, subheads, illustrations, and tables. And remember, space and time are critical when doing a scientific poster. You should also note that text set in all capital letters is harder to read than text in both upper and lower case and use indented paragraphs, not block paragraphs, in doing your scientific poster. Okay, in the next four slides we're going to talk about really the anatomy of a, a scientific poster. So first of all, obviously you need a title. Uh, the title should convey the issue or the approach uh, um, or the system. Uh, and it sort of needs to be catchy in order to uh, reel in uh, intoxicated passerbys. I say that sort of tongue-in-cheek because many of poster sessions or at a wine and cheese uh, party, or at least uh, during uh, an area um, where alcohol beverages are usually uh, appropriate. So uh, at the very least, don't make your, your, uh, uh, your title too long. Uh, what about an abstract? Well, do not include an abstract on a poster. If you're presenting your poster at a meeting, you'll probably uh, maybe be asked to submit an abstract. This abstract is for inclusion in the meeting catalog. Uh, not for really on your poster. Now, if for some reason you're forced to include an abstract section on your poster, certainly abide by those rules, but consider asking the meeting organizer why on earth their society's guidelines are so silly. At the very least, don't make your abstract uh, long. Aim for about 50 words or less. Okay, it's important to have an introduction, so get your viewer interested about the issue or question um, while using the absolute minimum uh, of background information and definitions. Uh, such things put a reader to sleep, which is dangerous if he or she has been standing for a great deal of time. Uh, quickly place your issue in the context of published primary literature, provide description and justification of general experimental approach, and hint at why your study, organism, or idea is, uh, is perfect for this type of research. Give a clear hypothesis. Uh, please note that uh, X has never been studied before. It's a classic, but classically lame reason for doing something. Unlike a manuscript, the introduction of a poster is a wonderful place to put a photograph or illustration that communicates uh, some aspect of your research question. Usually a maximum length is about 200 words uh, for an introduction. Uh, then move on to the materials and methods uh, section. Uh, briefly describe experimental equipment and methods, but not with the detail used for a manuscript. Uh, use figures and tables to illustrate experimental design if possible. Use flowcharts. Uh, the type with text and drawings uh, within boxes to uh, summarize uh, reaction steps or timing of experimental procedures. Include photographs or label drawings of, of the organism uh, or the idea that you have. Mention statistical analysis that were used and how they allowed you to address the hypothesis. So a, mix, a maximum length, about 200 words to accomplish all of that. And then on to the results. Now first mention whether the experiment worked. 
um, in the same paragraph briefly describe qualitative and, and descriptive results. Um, and you can sort of read here what some of those examples might be. Um, so show your results and then move on to the con conclusions and um, remind without sounding like you are reminding the reader of the hypothesis and result and quickly state whether your hypothesis was supported. Discuss why your results are conclusive and interestingly attempt to uh, convince the reader of these points. Uh, make sure that you uh, show the relevance of your findings to other published work and their relevance to real organisms in the real world uh, in future directions and the maximum length about uh, 300 words uh, for that if you use it in a scientific poster. And lastly, you should uh, cite your literature. Uh, follow the standard format exactly. Don't wing this. Um, websites and rumors you heard at Starbucks are equally undesirable sources. Uh, find a journal article that supports your needed fact. Also, if you haven't read a journal article completely, uh, like if you could only read the abstract online, you should not cite it. Now, the, the maximum length of a literature site is about 10 citations. And of course, with a scientific poster, you should have some acknowledgments. Uh, thank the individuals for specific contributions to the project, whether it's equipment, donations, statistical advice, laboratory assistance, or com comments on earlier versions of the poster. Mention those who had provided funding. Uh, be sincere, but do not lapse too much into informality in this section. And do not list people's titles. Also include in this section explicit disclosures for any conflicts of interest and conflicts of commitment um, that you might have. Uh, maximum length is about 40 words uh, for this section. Okay, well so much for creating scientific posters. If you've done some um, in the past, you might want to share that with the class uh, in terms of what worked, what didn't work, um, and uh, we can go on from there. So listen, thanks for listening, and I'll see you down the road.